Thank you very much. Um, are you able to hear me loud and clear? Okay, thank you. Great. Um, yeah, so thank you very much um, for attending this talk. And I'd also like to extend my gratitude to the PyCon ZA organizing committee for giving me uh, an opportunity to present this talk. Um, it's actually my very first uh, talk uh, at any uh, PyCon or any conference for that matter. So it's, uh, it's really uh, great uh, and a privilege um, to be able to present uh, the little knowledge um, that I've gained uh, with you all. Um, so a little bit about me. Um, my name is Victor and I am based in uh, Lusaka, Zambia. Um, I'm a junior developer at uh, an agency called Torchbox based in the UK. Um, if you've come across Wagtail, which is a Django uh, content management system, uh, Torchbox um, is the agency behind it. And also just to mention that um, we are hiring, so if uh, you're looking for a role, uh, you can check out uh, torchbox.com forward slash careers, and you might find uh, something uh, of interest for you. I've provided my Twitter and GitHub links there, it's at engineervix, and uh, you can also check out my blog at importthis.tech. So um, my talk, to begin my talk, I uh, will talk about, uh, first of all, deploying uh, Django projects in general. Um, I think for many people, it's usually very easy to get up and running with Django. Uh, the documentation is quite good. Um, it's, it's easy to learn it and be able to build something really quick. Uh, but in many cases, um, I've seen it, I've experienced it myself, and I've seen it with uh, people around me. The challenge is usually uh, being able to deploy your project or to get it uh, out from your computer and put it out there so that other people can access it. And uh, part of that challenge uh, comes in because there are too many options, really, uh, to deploy Django projects. And even the official documentation itself uh, does mention that, and and it says that they can only give you know, guidance um, on how to do certain things, but the decision really is up to you uh, on which path you take uh, and how you deploy your application. So this can be quite uh, challenging, especially for, uh, for new developers. And so uh, usually you find yourself uh, uh, asking yourself which question, you're asking yourself which route am I going to take? How am I going to deploy? Um, my application. And uh, I've put up a couple of links uh, there where there's, they go into more detail talking about the different server setups. And because of the limited time, uh, I won't go into much detail. Uh, but suffice to say that we can generally say that there are two main routes um, when it comes to deploying um, Django web application. And I think this probably applies to to other web applications as well, uh, built with other frameworks. Um, and that's either the, the, the VPS route um, or uh, using a platform as a service. Um, and the, the thing about using VPS means you have to set up the server yourself. You have to be uh, aware of security issues. You have to manage a lot of things on your own. You have to set up uh, uh, the, 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 the reverse proxy, whether it's Nginx, uh, Apache Web Server, or whatever you use. And again, there are so many options there. Um, so that's the thing about virtual private servers. But then uh, you could also make your life easier and use the platform as a service, such as Heroku um, um, and AWS, which was also talked about by the previous speaker. Um, but then these services often come at a cost. They're usually expensive and sometimes very complex in setting up. Uh, so all of these uh, can present uh, really uh, big challenges when it comes to deploying uh, your application. And that's where Doku comes in. Um, and that's, uh, that's what uh, we'll focus on in this talk. So Doku uh, aims to, to simplify 
uh, some of these hurdles that come with uh, deploying web applications. And uh, so what is this uh, doku about? It's, it's, it's an open source, uh, it's an open source platform as a service. So it, it's kind of like having your own platform as a service, hosting it on your own server. Um, and it's been uh, described as, as being like basically a mini Heroku. Uh, so you can, you can sort of like uh, manage your own applications on your own server. And uh, it's powered by Docker. Um, although at first glance, it might seem that you need to know Docker in, or in order to use it, but uh, not necessarily. Um, you don't need to know Docker in order to use uh, a Docker, uh, but it certainly does give much more flexibility if you know Docker, because then you'll be able to customize it uh, better. And it also integrates pretty well with Git. Um, so. It, it, if, if, if you use Git, um, which I believe most developers use, um, it makes it easy because you just push uh, your code to your server and then Docker triggers the deployment and everything uh, gets up and running in that way. Uh, so why Docker? Um, why should one use Docker when there are so many different options? Um, so firstly, um, I mentioned that uh, it, 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 the purpose really of why Docker was introduced is to make it easy to deploy your applications. Um, and it, it does so by abstracting certain complex things that you would normally have to do, especially if you are running applications on your own server. Um, things like, uh, for instance, setting up uh, Nginx, if you're using Nginx, um, uh, setting up um, your SSL certificates and so on, isolating different environments uh, for different apps if you're running multiple apps on a single server and so on. So it makes it really easy, uh, or at least it simplifies the process of deploying your applications. And secondly, Doku has been around um, since 2013. Uh, version 0 0.1.0 was released in 2013. Um, so that's nearly a decade. Uh, there's quite a huge community around it. Um, if you saw earlier um, at the beginning, I uh, showed a screenshot of the GitHub repository. Um, it has over uh, 26,000 uh, stars. So it's an, it's, 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 there's a huge community behind it and it's constantly being developed uh, with new releases uh, very often. Um, so it's designed to host multiple sites on the same server. So if it means you can purchase um, a, a, a VPS on DigitalOcean or Linode or any such similar services, and you can run uh, multiple sites uh, on the same server uh, right out of the box without much uh, uh, of configuration. Uh, it's cost effective. It's an open source project. It's free. Um, the only cost that you incur is the cost of you spending uh, uh, money on the server. And usually uh, nowadays, those are really cheap. Uh, you can get a, a server on DigitalOcean for, for $6. That's probably about 100 rand or somewhere there. And it's pretty lightweight. Um, it doesn't require heavy uh, resources. Uh, it needs at least one gig of RAM, although if you have less than one gig of RAM, uh, there is a workaround uh, and the documentation uh, provides a way to, to go around that. But it's recommended to have at least uh, one gig uh, of RAM in order to run it. Uh, it has a rich plugin ecosystem, so you can uh, uh, there's, there's plugins for various databases like Postgres, like MongoDB, um, uh, like MySQL, MariaDB, and so on. There's plugins for Redis. Uh, there's, there's, there's plugins for pretty much, pretty much a lot of things that we use. Uh, there's plugins for um, uh, there's plugins for storage uh, and so on. So there's quite a rich plugin ecosystem, and all you just do is install the plugin. Uh, and everything is handled for you. Um, it's got really good documentation. Um, a lot of things are, are, are documented on their website, so it's, it's easy to find information. If you don't know something, you can look it up and uh, you will find it uh, and with a lot of uh, examples. Uh, it's got a, a very powerful and intuitive uh, command line interface. Um, certain things you may actually guess just from using certain commands uh, or using certain uh, plugins, for instance, uh, you can sort of like 
uh, introduce uh, how to use uh, a different plugin even when you haven't actually seen the documentation because uh, they've tried to be consistent uh, in, in, in the way that the, the command line interface is designed. Um, so, as I mentioned, uh, Doku works, uh, uses Docker uh, behind the scenes um, to deploy your application. So it, uh, it isolates um, each application in its own uh, sort of like Docker container. And so it uses uh, what are known as builders to customize uh, how apps are built from source. And by default, it uses uh, the Heroku build packs. And these build packs are can be more can be described simply as a, a way a way to give instructions on how to set up your project, um, and this is what we're going to use uh, for this demo. So that's the that's the recommended way of deploying apps uh, to 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 a Docker server. Uh, but there are other options, and one of them uh, is using uh, the Docker file where you can define um, how your container is going to be built. And uh, it's well, all of this also is uh, well documented. Um, so we've said a lot of things about the the good. We've said a lot of good things about Doku, but it's certainly not perfect, and there are some limitations. And one of the biggest limitations is the fact that it's limited to a single server, so you can't scale your application uh, to multiple hosts. So if you start, maybe you develop your own SaaS, your own software as a service, and it starts growing huge, um, and you want to scale it across multiple hosts, and you're using Docker, uh, that's not possible. So the only thing you can do is increase the resources on that single server. Um, but sometimes that may not be desirable. And then secondly, one of the other big drawbacks is that it doesn't come uh, by default with a web UI. And so you have to be comfortable working on the command line interface uh, for you to be able to use Docker. I mean, Doku, um, unless you purchase the Pro version, which recently, uh, which is the new pro, uh, offering uh, from the Doku uh, team, uh, but it's it's quite expensive. Uh, I think it costs uh, over eight hundred dollars. Although it's it's a lifetime, uh, it's 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 a once, it's a price you pay once, and and that's it. Uh, so those are the, the some of the, the drawbacks or limitations uh, of using Doku. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, I think if you are getting started, you've you've got a, a project you've just built. I, I think it, it's it's a good candidate and uh, it's a good way to deploy uh, your application. So having talked uh, a little bit about uh, deployment, about Doku, what it is, and the benefits, uh, and how it works, and so on. Um, I think now we will do a quick demo just to demonstrate um, how to deploy um, a, a sample uh, Django application. I have a repository. Um, I have a repository here on my GitHub. Um, so it's at engineervix forward slash uh, Django dash deployment dash tutorial. And this is the basis uh, for this demo. Um, so there are two, there are actually three tags. So version 0.1.0 shows you the project before uh, before Doku came in um, or before we configured it uh, for Doku. And version 0.2.0 um, is the project after we've configured it uh, to work with Doku. So you can do a diff uh, and see uh, the differences. Uh, but suffice to say, um, some of the main thing to consider um, when setting up your project um, to deploy with Doku is, um, so we, we, we said first of all that Doku uses Docker under the hood and Docker um, by default uh, has an ephemeral file system. So which means uh, things are not natively persisted uh, unless of course you define uh, volumes uh, in your container. Um, so one of the things it's, that's recommended is to set up your project to serve or have media files um, hosted externally. And um, for that purpose, you could use uh, AWS S3 or you could use um, other services uh, such as Backblaze uh, and so on, which are S3 compatible. So that's that's one of the things um, that's recommended. And then also secondly, uh, 
it's also recommended to use um, Django white noise um, to save your media files. Um, so instead of relying on Nginx, uh, saving your, your, your media, your, your static files and media files, um, it's recommended to use a, 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 an, ex an external package called Django white noise. And this is also uh, relatively easy to set up and is well documented. Um, other packages for consideration are Django storages, which uh, helps you to manage the, the storage backend uh, for your media and, and static files. Um, in this setup, um, static files are, are, are kept on the Doku server itself. It's only the media files, which are files that are uploaded by users, uh, which uh, are kept um, on an external service and for this demo i'm using uh, backblaze which is relatively easy to set up um, i've set up uh, two buckets one is a is a private one and one is is a public one so the private one is what we use for our backups uh, just to make sure that we have our database uh, backups um, stored off-site and then this is a, a, a bucket that we're using uh, for our uploaded uh, media files um and then the other things to note also um, from this project um, in order to, to set it up. So there's this proc file we talked about uh, build packs. So this, this is one of the, the key files that you need to have on your project. Uh, it defines um, what will happen or what uh, it gives instructions on what Docker will run uh, at various uh, phases in the email applications life cycle. So, um, We've defined uh, our app um, with this as web, and then so it runs G Unicorn um, uh, with that uh, Wizgy uh, module. And then on the release phase, uh, we want to run migrations. So hence uh, that command uh, where we run migration. So proc file uh, is one of the things that's required um, for you to, uh, it, it's, it's one of the things that defines the build packs or as part of the syntax uh, or specification for, for the Heroku build packs. And then secondly, uh, we also have this runtime.txt file, which where you define the, the, the Python version that you're using for the project. So if you're using Python 3.8, this will be Python 3.8 point something and so on. In this case, we're using Python 3.10. Uh, and so this is defined in our runtime.txt file. Uh, we also have this app.json where we define uh, certain things uh, for example, uh, cron, we, we can set up a cron schedule and we can define commands that we, we need to run and we can actually use the cron syntax here. So in this example, we want to clear our sessions at, on a daily basis. So this runs at midnight every day. Uh, then we also define um, the, the scaling for, for our project. So we have the, the, the web, um, we have our, our, our project uh, uh, called web and then we are, by default we only want to run one instance um, of, of our project but then at a later stage for instance maybe when you want to scale it up you can change this to two or three and so on and so you will have multiple uh, instances of your project running um, so we are using the python build pack and by default it, it knows how to do certain things. It runs things like collect, uh, collect static for Django applications. It's able to detect that it's a Django application and it will run uh, collect static for you. But say you want to, you don't want to do that and you want to do custom things, you can set up uh, pre-deploy uh, scripts. And in this case, we've set up a pre-deploy script where we want to just uh, do some checks prior to deploying our application. So we have this, uh, post compile uh, script, which is a bash script. Um, and then we're basically just running two commands. We're, we're running check, uh, manage the pi check, we check the deployment. So if this fails, then our deployment will not uh, proceed. And then if it passes, then we collect static and then it continues uh, to deploy uh, our application. So I've talked about the, the, the project setup, but um, all of this, uh, is, is just the beginning. You also need, obviously, to set up your server. And for this demo, I have set up um, a server using Hetzna. So um, there's the server, which um, is, I think it's two gig RAM and it's, it's, it's got 20 gig of storage. Um, 
Setting up servers may also be something complex, especially for beginners. And I have uh, created this uh, setup script to, to bootstrap your server with Ubuntu. Um, it's, it, it makes it really easy and you're basically done in about 10 uh, to 15 minutes. And it does at least have some basic uh, security and, and a couple of other things. Uh, uh, you can clone it and customize it uh, to suit uh, your needs, uh, but it's actually based on uh, JSON his uh, script. So I, I actually forked, uh, uh, it's based on another script and then I added my own customization, but it's, it makes things easy. So it prepares your server when you set up your server on DigitalOcean or whatever hosting provider, then you set it up using this script and it, it installs all the important things that you need at least uh, to be able to then uh, install uh, Doku. Um, so I've set up the server and then you also obviously have to have a domain and for this demo I'm using this domain about this dot link and you have to set up uh, your records, your A records pointing to the IP address of your server and it's recommended to have uh, at least a wildcard uh, A record and then an at record. Uh, I've also added a, a, a C name record uh, which redirects um, to uh, to HTTPS and uh, that link. Um, so with this, um, yeah, another thing I, I mentioned also, um, it's also recommended to set up uh, some kind of error tracking and monitoring for your uh, project. Uh, Sentry is one of them. There are many other options, but I think um, Sentry is, is, is one of those uh, uh, options uh, that you could use. Um, so all of these things have, documented them uh, on this repo. I've talked about the prerequisites. Um, yeah, for this project also, we are using transactional mail, um, using Mailgun. Um, you can use whichever uh, you want. So I will basically be following these steps as documented on this repo. So um, because of the time limitations, I've already set up the server, I've already uh, installed Doku. And so I'm basically beginning from step four uh, where I'm going to uh, copy my SSH public key uh, to the Doku uh, server. So uh, I will just, for the sake of time, I, I already prepped that. So I'm going to SSH into uh, the server, which I, I gave the name PyCon Zeta Demo. And on my local machine, I am going to, uh, I'm going to copy the uh, public key. Let me just try that again. So I'm going to copy the public key uh, to our server. So that's done. And, and I will then proceed now to run the, the next step where we create the app and then we add a domain and so on. So again, because of time limitations, I have um, encapsulated all of these steps into a script um, so that uh, we save time and essentially we are going to create an app um, on the server and then we'll add a domain um, then we will add the Postgres service and then we will set up uh, authentication uh, so that uh, Doku can automatically create backups um, to, uh, to our backblaze and you can use again the cron syntax to specify um, how often you want your backups. And then we will also set up uh, Redis uh, for caching. And then uh, there are a couple of environment variables that uh, we also need to set up. Um, so in this case, I disabled collect static um, because, well, for demonstration, but also um, because I want to run a check prior to, uh, to, to, to collecting static and deploying the application. Uh, but by default, this, this is uh, not disabled. Um, web concurrency, that's a, a setting for G-Unicorn, um, and it's normally recommended to set it to twice the, the CPU, uh, to twice the number of uh, CPUs or C virtual CPUs and then plus one. Um, so in this case, I have set it to three. Um, and then there are also a number of environment variables for your uh, S3, uh, for Sentry, uh, emails and so on, mail gun and so on. So all of this is um, 
encapsulated in, in the script, which I will run in just a second. Um, and then the other thing that we also have to do is add the build packs that I talked about. Uh, there are different uh, build packs are very available. And in this case, we're using the Heroku build pack for Python because it's a Python project. And if we, for instance, we're using Node.js, um, I didn't use Node.js on this project just to simplify. We would have added um, additional build packs. So there's a build pack uh, for Node.js, uh, as you can see there. And in the order of, of the, the addition of these build packs matters. And usually the this is a Python application. So the, the Python build pack would be the last one uh, in this case. So we'll start with the Node.js build pack where we would build our assets um, using Node.js. And um, here I gave an example also, let's say we had a geospatial application where you're using PostGIS as a database. So there's also a build pack for that. So, but in this case, um, we are only using the Python uh, build pack. And then um, there's also some uh, minimal, this, this is optional, but if you want to get the best experience, um, especially with Django application, you have to increase the client max body size so that the uploads um, work better for Django. I think the, I can't remember what the default uh, size is. Um, so you, you probably want to increase it. So in this case, we increased it to, uh, to 50 megabytes. So I'm going to run a script now, which is going to do all of these things up to uh, uh, step 12. Um, I've already logged into uh, the server here. And so I encapsulated those into uh, that. So you can see what's happening. Um, the first part, it's creating that app, which we've called my site. And then um, we've, we've added a, a, a domain to it, and then it's installing Postgres. Um, so this, uh, I think this will take about a minute or so. So you can see how relatively easy it is um, because besides Doku, if you were doing this um, on your own VPS, you would have to set up Postgres uh, and, and configure it and so on. Uh, but this is done almost like magically uh, using Doku. So we'll just wait a few seconds for this to finish. Um, and then once, once that is done, um, we will then go to our machine uh, locally where we basically add a new remote to our Git repo. Um, so maybe while this is happening, so in another tab, so this is um, this is our project, the same project um, that's on uh, the one I was showing you on, Git, on GitHub. Um, sorry, I just need to, okay, so it's, so that's the, uh, I've just gone into the folder for the project and you can see um, those are the same files that we have uh, there. So um, if we, check the remotes, we, we only have one remote and that's the, the origin and uh, that's the Git, the GitHub remote. So we need to add a new remote uh, pointing to our Doku instance. Um, so I'm using, uh, I have set up my SSH config in this way. So I've called my, my Doku server PyCon ZA demo and that's the IP address and that's the user. So instead of me, each time having to, to type the IP address and the user and so on. So this makes it easier. And so I will just add um, that remote um, to our project. Um, so I've added that remote, which I've called Doku. Um, and so that Doku is the user and then that's um, our server and then the project is my site. So here, um, the setup is done. Um, the setup is done. We've added a new uh, remote um, to our project. And so the next step now is to just push. Um, we'll just run git push and push uh, the changes uh, to our server. So just git 
push um, by default its origin, but in this case, we're pushing to the new origin, to the new remote, sorry, uh, called docu, which we just created. So when we run that git uh, push docu, um, it's going to trigger uh, the deployment um, based on the proc file that we've defined and the build pack that we have added. You've seen that it's installing Python 3.10, which is defined in the, the runtime.txt uh, file. Um, yeah, so just wait a few seconds for the um, installation or the set the project setup um, to proceed. So once uh, once this uh, uh, project is actually set up, um, it will be more or less ready uh, to run. Uh, but then there's one final thing that we need to do, and that's uh, setting up the SSL uh, certificates using uh, Let's Encrypt. So we would install the, 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 the Let's Encrypt uh, plugin. Um, it's one of the Doku uh, plugins. And then you define um, the email address to be used uh, for your certificate renewals. And then we also set up a cron job uh, so that uh, the plugin automatically renews our SSL certificates. Um, and then once we do that, then we can actually run a command. And this is the syntax um, that we would use. So on the server itself, um, we run uh, a command and that com we are running that command on the my site app which we created and we are creating uh, the super user so um, again i have done i've added that in the uh, finalized deployment script um, so that we minimize typing so that's what's on the script so i'll just simply uh, run that script uh, just once everything is done here. So you can see it's running collect static and um, it's releasing, it's uh, deploying our app. So that's almost done. Okay, so you can see it has deployed the application to uh, about this dot link and it's not HTTPS. So we will just finalize the deployment, um, install the, the, the Let's Encrypt plugin and add uh, a, a new, obtain a new certificate. And then we also install, we also add create a super user. So the certificate is obtained um, successfully and um, Nginx is being reloaded and I will get a prompt now to um, add a super user. Um, as, I, as I mentioned earlier, you can see that um, the certificate renewal has been added uh, has been added uh, to has been added uh, to the cron task okay so we're done um if we go to the if we try to access uh, our application, hopefully um, it should be live. So we're getting a 404. That's because um, in our models, um, there's supposed to be a model that's created. We didn't create any fixtures. Ideally, you would uh, have Django fixtures so that uh, certain models are created by default. Um, but I didn't do that uh, for this demo. So we will just log into 
uh, the admin and create a new. Sorry about that. I think I click. I went to. Okay, so I will log in to the admin and create. Um, I will create a new home page and just add some. Uh, some quick uh, content um, and then I will just save that. I will also just quickly edit the about page so that we have something so about you know there and I will save. So if we go back to our application, um, it should now be uh, running. So that's how um, you deploy your application um, using Doku. Um, I think it makes uh, life much easier. If we were to make some changes uh, to our project, um, all we would do is make those changes, commit them, and then uh, once we commit them, we just git push uh, Doku again, and then that's uh, redeployed. So we can uh, we can make we can have so many deploys um, at any given time. Uh, Without this setup, sometimes I, I think before I used Doku, I would spend so much time um, prepping deploys because you would have to uh, restart your Nginx and do certain things manually, like run migrations and so on. But here you just make your changes, um, push them to your Doku server, and Doku handles the, uh, the rest. Um, another thing that is also worth mentioning, um, is that you can automate this process um, using um, the continuous integration. And in this uh, repository, I have, I'm sorry, the wrong repository. In this uh, repository, I have an example um, of how that can be done. Uh, there's already um, a GitHub Actions workflow which runs uh, linting and tests uh, whenever changes uh, or code is pushed. Uh, to the main branch. Um, so there is also a GitHub action that you can use to deploy to your uh, Docker server, and uh, it's currently uh, uh, disabled here. So all you need to do is add your remote URL and your private key, and then um, you can configure this uh, to automatically deploy once test tests pass, like in this case. Um, I've put a condition here that all the linting must pass and all the tests must pass. And only when that is true uh, will the deployment uh, be made. So um, so that, that makes it easy also to, de to make uh, deployments even when you are not, for instance, working um, on your machine. Uh, so you, you can simply push um, to your Git repository um, on GitHub or whatever uh, remote source that you use, and then that will trigger uh, automatic uh, deployments. So, um, well, that's uh, that's it um, for me. Uh, at this point, I will uh, invite uh, any questions uh, or comments. All right. For the talk, I will definitely use the for our project. So, any questions by anyone? Uh, so, this is the right time to ask. Uh, uh, so, uh, uh,
Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it.